In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the upcoming pattern. We do have plenty of storms on the way that we need to track, including an ongoing severe weather and tornado outbreak across the central and moving eastward towards the up, upper Midwest, Ohio Valley, some of the deeper south areas as well. So we have an outbreak that is going to be spreading eastward over time here and also some other impactful storms down the road. So let's just dive into things. And as we take a look at later on, this evening, uh, what we see is that there's a couple of areas of thunderstorms ongoing, and we see it for a lot of these areas, like I mentioned, the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, down through the Deep South. Uh, not only that, though, we do have an area here over the Mid-Atlantic and portions of the Southeast seeing some thunderstorms, and even down through Florida and some of the other areas along the Southeast Coast. We do have snowfall ongoing here for the Rockies, of course, no big surprise there, and still a very strong low over North Dakota. As we move towards Wednesday on May 8th, what we see happening is that that low rapidly weakens. We see 1,005 now over South Dakota, so it's kind of like the opposite of a bomb cyclone. Uh, it's doing like reverse bombogenesis where it's just weakening uh, at a rapid pace there. And we see snowfall still ongoing for Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado. You can expect some of those impacts to linger as a weakening low at, at that rate. The impacts can't even dissipate at the same rate probably as that low is weakening. So expect a little bit more major impacts to linger uh, behind that low, but they will eventually die out just like that low did. Uh, we do see that over the deeper south areas for this date on again Wednesday on the 8th, we have a resurgence of this low down here, 997 over Arkansas. And our main area of concern is going to be somewhere in here. We will, of course, take a look at the Storm Prediction Center outlook at the end of this video. We do have a storm system over the northeast as well. And then over the southeast, there is some isolated and scattered about thunderstorms ongoing. By Wednesday on the 9th, our main concern spreads eastward. We see a 998 in between West Virginia and Pennsylvania. A lot of potential severe weather underneath things for Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Delmarva, D.C. and Maryland, Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and perhaps even more states than just that. I know I just named off a ton of states. Rapid fire there, but there is a pretty widespread area of thunderstorms expected for the state on Thursday, uh, the 9th here. As we kind of pass through to Friday morning, I want to take a look at Friday morning because it's moving quickly, but there is a low offshore now, 993, and it does become a bit of a nor'easter for the northeast before fully moving out. The only good news is that this is rapidly moving. This is by the time we're taking a look at about 8 p.m. on Thursday. And by the time we're taking a look at 1 or 2 p.m., it's already very far offshore of the northeast. So uh, maybe a little bit of impacts overnight into the morning, but that is going to be weakening uh, over time. And by the time we reach Saturday, um, it will have moved up into Canada and weakened significantly, basically leaving no impacts left over. We do have 1,001 millibar over uh, Ohio, and that's going to bring some isolated and scattered thunderstorm potential for these areas. So keep that in mind, but nothing too major at this point. By Sunday here on the 12th, we see again the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast dealing with some isolated and scattered thunderstorms. But again, nothing too major. Some thunderstorms over New Mexico and Texas here. Uh, not seeing anything too impactful as of now with that. By Monday on the 13th, we see that these areas are beginning to get more and more uh, large with the areas expecting these thunderstorms, mostly these humid types of thunderstorms coming in from the Gulf for a lot of the Texas coast, Louisiana, portions of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska, as well as Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama. A lot of these deeper south areas dealing with some thunderstorm activity early next week. We do have a stronger low 999 over Canada, and that is bringing some impacts, especially to the Ohio Valley Great Lakes and interior northeastern states. Let's keep going though. I want to take us straight towards Tuesday. What we see is that a lot of this activity that was over the deeper south has spread towards the southeast. So we're seeing it more for this area now. States like Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia here on the 14th. And by Wednesday, that moves offshore. And we're left with again a little bit of a quieter pattern. Wednesday the 15th, we do have some thunderstorm activity for New Mexico, Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana. And Arkansas there, uh, not much else happening elsewhere. 
Thursday on the 16th. Again, this same thing wants to happen where this is kind of spreading eastward. So we see more and more areas being impacted by this by Thursday on the 16th. And that's basically the end of the model run. So we don't get any further than that. Let's take a look at the total precipitation here. And I need to update this. I forgot to go through and get all of these ready. So we're just going to have to do it by, by hand here. But we do see that there is plenty of activity still expected east of the plains and even including the southern plains mostly. It's South Dakota, North Dakota, and Nebraska that really get left out there. But overall, average to above average activity here in the eastern states. And then also for my Wyoming and Montana, it appears like those areas could see quite a bit of activity. Now, as we take a look at the total snowfall here, let's see if we've seen any uh, kind of lowering. And we have along the Cascades. Now the, the Sierra Nevada is seeing basically nothing. And we're only seeing a little bit left for the Rockies. My friends, I think this is the end of the snowfall for the 2023 to 2024 season. But let's wait and see. But this could be nearing the end as we're seeing mountain ranges getting basically uh, left off the list of snowfall here. One by one, we're seeing them kind of stripped away, and the area seeing snowfall is getting smaller and smaller. Temperature pattern, let's dive into it. Again, got to update this real quick, but we see warmer temperatures in the east. That kind of comes to an end after the 10th, uh, bringing about a colder flip-floppy pattern through about the 20th, and then we get a bigger warm-up here right around 19th, 20th, 21st, followed by another cool-down. And it looks like another warm-up is on the way here, though, after the 22nd, because we see colder air prevailing here over the west. That should force the warmer air eastward. But overall, if you were to take a look at this as a whole, we see a lot of fluctuation between cold and warm, especially across the central and eastern states. And that spells really bad news for severe weather, as, you know, what we're looking for in a severe weather event is exactly this. So I'll, I'll show you here, but... A warmer air here uh, surging in from the Gulf, so especially when you have that humidity. And then the cold air spreading eastward here from the west uh, and really intruding on this. So your cold front boundary would be along that uh, kind of left side of that bubble that I've drawn, and you would have a low on the northern end of things. That is the perfect severe weather setup. And really what that relies upon is these quick moving temperature patterns. So when we see more of that, that just leads me to believe there's more potential for these setups over and over and over again. And unfortunately, that does appear to be possible in the long range. Let's take a look at the Storm Prediction Center outlooks here. And for day one, we do have a couple of general thunderstorm risk areas in the lighter greens. One bigger one across the east. One here for the Rockies and one down there for Florida. That's where we expect general thunderstorms. But again, anything is possible. So uh, heed any watches, warnings, and advisories because sometimes severe weather does happen outside of the expected areas. Uh, the darker green area here, which is quite large, is your marginal risk area. It's called a level one, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. Your yellow area here for a lot of the Ohio Valley is a slight risk where we expect scattered about severe weather reports to come in. And then this orange area here for Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky is your enhanced risk area. And that's where we expect a little bit more widespread severe weather to become possible. Day two uh, is looking quite similar, except everything drops a little bit further south. We see, again, a general thunderstorm risk area there in the lighter green, marginal risk area there across the darker green. Your yellow area here is that slight risk once again. And then we have an even larger enhanced risk area here with that widespread severe weather expected to be possible there for Wednesday, May 8th, tomorrow from the time I'm making this video. Day three here, what we see is that the East Coast and Gulf Coast really get in on some of this action. We do have a general thunderstorm risk back west for the Rockies and some of the plains, but really the highlight here is the East on Thursday, May 9th. We have a very large general thunderstorm risk area, again, a very large marginal risk area, and then a very, very large slight risk area all the way from Texas eastward to Georgia, and then all the way up to southern New Jersey across the southeast coast. So definitely quite a large area, and this is big enough, and I think there's enough potential to where I wouldn't be surprised if we do see an enhanced risk upgrade at some point in here. I think the best dynamics are going to be in the mid-Atlantic, perhaps for uh, some of these areas across central Virginia into the Delmarva. I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see that area. We do have um, a low up here to the north, and just underneath that, I think we could get quite a, a squall line along there. It, it's quite a bit of a way out, obviously, but definitely curious to see if that does set up, and I, I would think the best chance for an enhanced risk upgrade is on the northern end. It could happen anywhere in here, though, or it could just not happen, so we'll have to wait and see, of course. 
Anyway, we do upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe for daily weather uploads just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload, so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.